Well, the Piranha Head animation was actually on the tail end of me creating my own animations at home when I was a kid. And I started animating when I was like nine or 10, you know, with action figures and silly stuff like that. But, you know, you got Robot Chicken now where that's what they do. They animate with action figures or puppets that look like action figures. And I worked my way up. And I saw this TV show that aired on the Comedy Network in Canada and the show was called Buzz and it had these two hosts Darren and Mo and the first season of their show and they had this animated segment and it was done by this Ottawa based animator it was about this dead dog that got put in awkward situations and I saw that animation and I thought it was good and I thought I could do something equal to that. At that time, I was probably like 16 or 17 and I phoned Comedy Network because back then email was a prevalent way to communicate, but phone was still like the primary way. And I worked my way from the reception desk person and I got them to forward me and forward me and forward me. So you would leave a voicemail with the person. You do this over and over again and you don't stop and they either find you annoying, they don't reply to you at all, or they find you annoying enough to send you on to the next person so that you don't bug them anymore. Finally got in contact with the producer of the Buzz Show and I actually got myself a meeting to pitch them animated segments for their show. They were producing the Buzz Show out of um, Rogers TV's uh, Toronto location. So Rogers TV is kind of like the local cable channel and the show actually started there and then worked its way up to like Canada's comedy channel. And um, so that's where I ended up having a meeting with the producer and he brought me into like the edit suite that they were editing the show in. And back then it was like tape to tape. It was manual tape to tape, editing their whole show that aired on a national television network. And I brought a VHS tape, which was what you did. DVDs were not as popular then. And I had all my old animations. I edited this like animation demo of clips of all of my stuff. Cause I was hoping that they'd be interested in something that I had already animated because I had animated like 30 or more little short animation. They watched it all and there wasn't really anything in that that caught this producer's attention. So he went to me and he was like, well, what other ideas do you have? And I didn't have any. All my ideas were on this VHS tape. So on the spot, I kind of made up a, an idea and I was watching his reactions. So I started by going, okay, it's a comedy medical animation. And he's nodding going, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And it's got a doctor who's a surgeon. And he's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But the surgeon has a piranha for a head. And he's like, oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yeah. And then he does like surgeries, but instead of doing the surgery, he eats the people. He's like, yeah, and it gets all bloody. And the producer's like, go animate it. He didn't offer money or nothing. I just wanted to get an animation on TV. I went off and I animated the first Piranha Head animation. And that video is on my YouTube channel right now. <laughs> The first Piranha Head animation was all done um, with analog tape to tape editing. And then when I finished that first Piranha Head animation, I went back in and I met with the producer of the show Buzz on the Comedy Network. Although he liked it, the production value wasn't at the level that he thought could be broadcast. And he's like, do another one. And um, he said, make it look better. So for me, making it look better, I have to go digital, first of all, because that was something that was happening. And I had to edit it with the early nonlinear editing system. So like Premiere and like an early version of Final Cut. Uh, back then, like digital video wasn't a popular thing yet. And even with Comedy Network, they were doing all their shows on what was called Beta SP, which was like standard definition professional videotape that wasn't digital, it was all analog. And at that time I was in film school. I booked out edit suites and I brought in all my analog stuff and I transferred it to digital because they had that technology. And um, yeah, I ended up transferring it all to mini DV digital tape and then and doing the final version of it um, in uh, some stuff in Premiere, an early version, and then version two of Final Cut. Yeah. <laughs> 
So the second Piranha Head animation, um, I decided I up the graphics. There's virtual sets in it. There's um, teleportation effects. There's um, wire removal. There's these alien characters in it that are actually like floating off the ground. I had wires going from the bottom of them. So I did compositing effects in Photoshop, frame by frame. There was a lot of stuff going on there, but then Comedy Network didn't like the science fiction aspect to it because the whole plot of it was aliens being down and abduct piranha head to mate with their queen and ultimately i think that's what killed it let's get busy with the uh piranha head animation although you know it didn't end up airing on the comedy network it did allow me to learn a lot and i met people uh, at Rogers TV. So it actually opened up the door for me to come through there uh, later and be a video editor in house for them. Um, although after that, there was a long period of time where I didn't do any animation. I ended up moving into video editing and stuff like that with the new skills that I gained from film school and doing this project. Years later, I ended up using Prana Head in a demo video that actually got me hired to be a professional stop motion animator for this studio in Toronto called Cup of Coffee Studios. Um, although I only did it professionally for about two years before I went back into TV production. This is Richard Weed live outside of the Spitfall Hospital where Piranha Head and Doctor is killing everyone! Even though, you know, the second Piranha Head animation and the first Piranha Head animation didn't end up going to TV, I never stopped working on trying to get better at animation so animation was always like my hobby and even when i was young it was my hobby it's just i had more time for my hobby but then as i kind of moved into a video editing and video production as like a career and i always had plans to do piranha head as a multiple short series i was always writing the next script figuring out what i wanted to do next but the interesting part is is that the more i learned about production and the more i learned about editing and ultimately when seven years later when i got hired as a cup of coffee um, i kept learning new things and then it made what i was going to do look bad <laughs> or my skills would improve and i'd be like man i should just scrap this and redo it all over again so i've actually been working on a new version of piranha head for probably about 20 years close to 20 years constantly writing new scripts i've built sets so i actually have pictures of various stages of animation all the different sets different versions of the characters i have these animation tests and a whole bunch of things that i've done with the characters um where i got very close to animating another installment but then I would have a really great thing happen in my video production or editing career. And I would have to put it on hold and then I would learn something new and I would incorporate it. So it's basically the more I learned, the more I wanted to put into this Piranha Head animation. And even now, as of this video, it's still in development hell because either A, I don't have time to animate it because I'm working on something or I learned something new and, um, you know, I want to change the quality, make it as good as it can be. I would love Piranha Head to be something that could be produced as a pilot at a Netflix quality, you know, um, something that was like, you know, on the level of like the way Robot Chicken looks or better. Um, so that's kind of my hope for it now where when I was a kid, it was just all about, let's just do this for fun and show it to my friends. Now, because I've worked so long in film and television, it's like I have this quality standard in my own head that I have to uphold before I can actually animate it or release it. When I was a kid, I just did whatever <laughs> I wanted to do and I just had fun and it, even though I was doing something wrong, I didn't care. I just did it to do it. And that's part of the reason why I started the Off Animation YouTube channel. Um, all of my childhood animations, I still have the majority of them on old tape like Hi8 or VHS tape. And I've started to release them now on my YouTube channel, put them out there in a place that's more permanent 
you know, get them off the tape format before the tapes get too old to <laughs> to be used. And I've been slowly posting my old 90s homemade animations, I call them, on uh, my off animation YouTube channel. And to my surprise, I'm getting views <laughs> on them, which, you know, makes me kind of rethink, you know, the high quality standard that I'm trying to achieve with my work now and whether or not I should just animate and not care about standards when I send it out and cross my fingers. But, you know, we'll see. We'll see what kind of reaction we get on the off animation YouTube channel. And if, you know, I get regular viewers on there, well, maybe that'll motivate me to, to really push one of these other animated projects that I've had in the works forward. Mm -hmm.